I got hit by a car, injuring my head. The doctor said I might suffer from amnesia. Jokingly, I asked the girl who was by my bedside who she was. She paused and said we were just ordinary friends. Chapter 1. I stared at Gabriella, who sat beside my bed and uttered the words, ordinary friends, with a cold, distant expression, as if she wasn't joking. The words, gotcha, got stuck in my throat, and I could only look at her in silence. I thought that if the doctor hadn't called her, she probably wouldn't have shown up at the hospital, but I didn't question her. Instead, I hesitated for a moment before forcing a nonchalant smile. Is that so? That's really kind of you. She responded with a cold, mm, as if I was wasting her time. She looked down, turned on her phone, glanced at the screen, and said, now that you're awake, I'll head out. I've got work to do. Before I could react, she stood up, ready to leave, as she reached the door and pulled it open. Perhaps driven by a sliver of conscience, she turned around and advised me, rest well. The smile on my face faded as soon as she closed the door behind her, leaving me expressionless. No one knew Gabriella and I were in a relationship. We were college sweethearts, and after graduation, we moved to the South together, joining the top marketing firm in South City. We were young then, but we knew office romances were frowned upon, so we tacitly agreed not to mention our relationship to anyone. Four years later, we both got promoted to business managers, each leading separate teams in direct competition. At that point, there was even more reason to keep our relationship hidden, so we've been keeping it a secret ever since. I had hesitated and asked her if we should make our relationship public, considering there wasn't a specific company rule against it, but she always brushed it off absent-mindedly. I wasn't even sure if we were still a couple, but today, I got my answer. The doctor told Gabriella I might have temporary memory loss but assured her I'd recover soon. Even in such a confusing situation, she still said we were just ordinary friends. She probably wasn't afraid of being questioned when I remembered. She didn't even care if I was truly amnesiac or just joking. She probably wanted to break up a long time ago. After all, if we didn't break up, how could she openly pursue Diego? Chapter 2. A man's intuition is often sharper than radar. In fact, the feelings between Gabriella and me had already cooled off long before. We've been together for too long, from our sophomore year in college until now. Seven years in total. We know each other as well as the lines on our palms. So any change in her behavior couldn't escape my notice. The signs probably started when a new intern joined her department. He was tall and handsome, named Diego. His last name is Lee. And the HR who manages employee records once gossiped to me that under the father's name section of his application, he had written Pablo Lee, the owner of our company, a wealthy, second-generation heir working in his own family's business. At first, Gabriella explained her extra care towards Diego like this. It wouldn't be wise to offend him. And he's just a childish guy. Not my type at all. You're overthinking it. I silently accepted her explanation. Later, I wasn't sure if she didn't take me seriously or just didn't bother hiding anything from me. Within two weeks of Diego's joining, I logged into her long and used music account, intending to find some background music. I discovered that she and Diego were following each other, something I found strange since she hadn't listened to music in years due to her busy schedule. This account was one we used in college when we used to listen to music together, amassing 8,896 hours of shared listening time. She had even created a playlist named after me, filled with love songs that reminded her of me. Songs by my favorite artists, songs I'd shared on social media, and songs she listened to during our long-distance relationship over winter and summer breaks. When I checked, I found she had deleted that playlist. In its place, her recent listening history was filled with Korean pop songs, something she wouldn't typically be interested in but that Diego frequently listened to. We work in marketing. So I convinced myself she was just trying to keep up with current trends among young people. Maybe I was just overthinking things. So, I quietly logged out of her account without saying a word. I'm not one to make a fuss without concrete evidence. After all, the person who remains at the table until the end is always the one with the fewest words and the calmest expression. Of course, her coincidences with Diego didn't end there. In early February, she led her project team on a new assignment. At that time, I was leading my team on a different project in another city and I occasionally heard that her project involved dealing with a very difficult British client. After a long day of work with no time to eat, I called her to ask about the project's progress. She didn't answer, probably busy, so I sent her a text. She never replied. Later, I saw a group photo she posted on social media, with Diego standing beside her, flashing a bright smile and giving a peace sign. It seemed the project was going smoothly. Her caption read, Know yourself, know your enemy. Diego posted a similar picture with the caption victory in every battle. I clicked on their profiles and noticed they had even changed their status messages to these phrases, as if they were sharing a secret code, an understanding that only they had within the project. Since she hadn't returned my call or text, yet commented on Diego's post with, eat quickly, 
Take care of your stomach. I rubbed my own growling, slightly aching stomach and turned off my phone. This was the second time I chose to tolerate her behavior. Chapter 3. I was discharged three days later, after the doctor confirmed I was fine. That day, I didn't receive a single message from Gabriella. However, she did send a bouquet of flowers, holding the cappuccino colored flowers. I decided to give Gabriella one more chance. I sat in the hospital corridor and called her. It took a long time for her to answer. I gently asked, Gabriella, I'm being discharged today. Do you have time to pick me up? We tacitly avoided mentioning amnesia and ordinary friends. As if those words had never been spoken, she didn't respond immediately. After a moment, she said, I'm sorry, Daniel, I'm really busy and can't get away. Should I call a car for you? What are you busy with? I asked calmly. She paused, probably surprised. I was usually considerate, rarely pressing her so sharply for answers. I knew our first project had just wrapped up, and this was the quietest time for both of us. Yet she claimed to be busy. She didn't reply. I sighed and hung up the phone. A woman's love or lack of it is often painfully obvious. I remember when we had just graduated and started working. One night, I suddenly had a severe bout of gastroenteritis at 3 a.m. Before losing consciousness, I managed to call her. When I woke up, I found her sitting by my bed, her eyes red. One foot was in a slipper, the other in a sneaker, both left-footed. I couldn't help but smile weakly. She looked at me, still shaken, her eyes welling up again. You're still smiling. When I saw you collapsed at the door, I nearly had a heart attack. In times like this, you should call 911 first. What if I hadn't answered? It's so dangerous. I smiled at her, feeling both dependent and trusting. But in my heart, you're the safest person. See, there was a time when she genuinely cared about me. There was a time when we loved each other deeply and sincerely. Even though those days are almost unrecognizable now, recalling those distant memories still brings a faint, self-mocking smile to my lips. I shook my head and tossed the cappuccino-colored bouquet into the nearby trash bin. Don't like the flowers? Someone asked from behind. I turned around to see a man I didn't recognize, pointing at the flowers in the trash, apologizing. I'm sorry, the driver accidentally hit you yesterday. I brought you to the hospital, and after contacting your emergency contact, I had to leave due to other commitments. These are a discharge gift, and I've already covered your hospital bills. I apologize for the inconvenience. If there's anything else you need, please let me know. I laughed to myself, realizing that even the flowers were from a stranger. I looked up and apologized politely. I'm sorry. I thought they were from someone else. Inwardly, I sighed. I've always been a reasonable and well-mannered person. But being well-mannered doesn't mean I'm weak or easy to take advantage of. It's clear that Gabriella and I are truly over. Chapter 4 When I returned home from the hospital, Gabriella was already there. When I opened the door and walked in, she was sitting on the sofa. The TV was on, playing a variety show she wasn't interested in. And she was holding her phone, smiling faintly as she chatted with someone. The soft glow from the phone screen cast a gentle light on her face. I couldn't remember the last time I'd seen that kind of soft smile on her face. I paused at the door, and she was so engrossed that she didn't hear me come in until I softly called her name, Gabriella. She quickly wiped the smile off her face and looked up at me, startled. My eyes fell on her hands. She instinctively locked the phone screen and placed it face down on the sofa, looking at me with a mix of surprise and confusion. You're discharged? I finally allowed myself to smile, at her and at myself. I looked at her calmly, speaking softly but with a detached tone. Let's talk. Our breakup was surprisingly peaceful. We're both very composed people. And the entire process didn't take long. We're mature adults who value appearances. And everything was laid out clearly. There really wasn't much to discuss. We both understood without needing to say it. After I said, let's break up. She didn't ask why. She just stayed silent. I think she felt a sense of relief at that moment. After a while, she finally said, I'm sorry. I didn't accept her apology. I simply and calmly made arrangements for what would happen after the breakup. My tone was steady, and I didn't appear sad. My demeanor surprised Gabriella. When I suggested she move out soon, she suddenly interrupted me, asking, Daniel, you don't seem sad at all. She furrowed her brows slightly, her gaze fixed on my face, scrutinizing me with focused curiosity, as if she didn't understand. Women can be such ironic creatures, even if they no longer love you, even if the breakup is exactly what they've been longing for. They still feel dissatisfied seeing you so calm and composed. Maybe in her mind, I should be crying and begging her to stay, so she could feel a small sense of satisfaction amid her annoyance. I looked up at her, my expression neutral. I didn't tell her I had already been through my sadness. When she didn't reply to my messages but commented on Diego's latest post. When she deleted the playlist she had created for me just to listen to Korean pop songs with Diego. When she told me we were just friends while I pretended to have amnesia. When she was immersed in that ambiguous. Adult game of push and pull with Diego, thinking I wasn't aware, I had already grieved. 
To me, Gabriella was like a benign tumor growing inside my body. It wasn't fatal, but I knew that if I let it go, it would slowly turn malignant, gradually eroding my health and vitality. There was nothing to fear. I just needed to cut it out while it was still benign. The pain would be temporary, but eventually, I would heal. Before Gabriella finished packing and left, I calmly asked her one last question. Gabriella, did you lose interest in me because Diego is Pablo's son, or simply because he's just him? She stood by the door, turning back to look at me with the same beauty and grace she had when I first met her in college. Her pretty face had matured from its youthful innocence into a calm and composed elegance. I had always thought she was still the girl who blushed while awkwardly confessing to me on the playground, but at that moment, I suddenly realized that somewhere along the way, she had transformed into an adult who weighed the pros and cons in the depths of ambition. She paused before finally saying, Daniel, people always want to reach higher. Her words made me chuckle softly, but I respected her for being at least 70% honest. I looked at her and smiled sincerely. Gabriella, I wish you success in your climb to the top. May you achieve all that you desire. Her eyes lingered on my face, with a faint hint of regret hidden in their depths, but that regret was probably insignificant compared to her ambition. Finally, she sighed and said, Daniel, don't hate me. I didn't respond to her. Chapter 5 the downside of an office romance is that even after a breakup, you can't simply move on and forget each other, no matter what. People still have to go to work. When the taxi stopped downstairs at the company, I saw Gabriella and Diego. They weren't alone. There were other members of their team as well. It was lunchtime, and they were probably heading out to eat together. Diego was lively. His face lit up with a bright smile. He was facing Gabriella with his back to the street, gesturing animatedly as he spoke. Gabriella had a smile on her lips her eyes gentle as she watched him. She kept an eye on the crowd in the street behind him, pulling his arm to steer him away from bumping into people. It was both familiar and unfamiliar. After our breakup, she looked so happy. I stayed in the car, watching until their figures disappeared into the Hong Kong-style tea house downstairs before I looked away. The driver in front gave me a curious look and asked, are you secretly in love with that pretty girl? I smiled and explained, she's my ex-girlfriend. The driver's expression instantly changed from curiosity to awkwardness as if he wanted to comfort me but didn't know what to say. I kindly added, it's fine, it doesn't affect me. When I entered the company, Bella was delighted to see me and hurried over, saying, Daniel, you're out of the hospital, honestly, you should have let us visit you. I smiled and replied while walking, it was nothing serious, and besides, I'm fine now, aren't I? How's the review of the Hong Kong case going? She followed me back to my office with the printed materials in hand, passing me a stack of documents before glancing around the office. Seeing that there weren't many people around, she leaned closer and whispered, Daniel, don't look at the data yet. I have something I want to tell you. I put down the documents and looked up at her. There was a hint of frustration on her face. And she said, Daniel, you know that Albert is going to take over the Nanjing branch next month, right? We've all been talking about it. And it seems like the director position he leaves behind will likely be between you and Gabriella. Over the years, the two of you have been equally matched in performance. I'm not trying to gossip, but based on merit, whether it's you or Gabriella who gets the promotion, we'd all be convinced, but, but, she hesitated, biting her lower lip as if struggling to speak, I smiled gently and said, it's okay, it's just the two of us, go ahead, she paused before finally whispering, but, a few days ago, I saw Gabriella and Diego hugging in the break room, the fact that Diego is suspected to be the son of our boss Pablo isn't exactly a secret in the company, which is why Bella was so upset, she probably felt that Gabriella would have an unfair advantage. As I rolled the edge of the document in my hand, I suddenly felt like laughing. So, while I was in the hospital, wondering what Gabriella was doing with no word from her, she was having an affair with a rich second-generation heir, but that's not surprising. I laughed at myself and reassured Bella, it's okay, personnel appointments are decided by the higher-ups, we just need to do our jobs and let things take their course. Bella sighed, and I lowered my head to continue reviewing the data. When Gabriella knocked on my office door, I was quite surprised, after all, in my mind. Although our breakup was amicable and didn't end in a fallout, that only meant I was a decent person. It didn't mean that Gabriella and I could chat casually and pretend to be normal colleagues, unless necessary. I thought we'd both avoid any private communication, until I understood why she came. She stood in front of my desk, her gaze coolly fixed on me. After a moment, she said, Daniel, I thought you would resign. Her tone was a mix of persuasion and warning. Daniel, we've been together for seven years. Don't say I'm being ruthless, but when Albert goes to Nanjing next month, one of us will be promoted to director to fill his position. If I were you, I would start planning ahead and find another way out. I looked at her, understanding her meaning. She was certain she would get the position and was advising me to resign. Otherwise, 
Once she became the director and with the boss's son as her boyfriend, she'd likely force me to leave to avoid any gossip. Her warning was her kind way of advising me to make other plans. I can accept a woman's fickleness and change of heart, because emotions are not something that should be tested. But I didn't expect that she would lose even the last shred of humanity. I looked at her as if she were a stranger and said the first curse word that came to mind, Gabriella, you're a piece of trash. She silently accepted it. Chapter 6 my first direct encounter with Diego happened a week after my conversation with Gabriella. After our breakup, Gabriella, who had previously refused to go public about our relationship under the pretext of office romances are not a good idea, was now flaunting her relationship with Diego. I saw their lovey-dovey posts on social media. There were countless colleagues from the company congratulating them. But only the mutual friends Gabriella and I had from college were shocked and messaged me on WeChat, asking what had happened. I didn't respond to any of them. The day Diego appeared in front of me was just an ordinary afternoon. Most of the office staff were either out for lunch or resting at their desks. I was alone in the break room, grinding coffee beans. As the rich aroma of coffee gradually filled the air, Diego appeared behind me. I stepped aside to make way for him, but he didn't walk past. Instead, he stood in front of me, his gaze lingering on me with a somewhat meaningful expression before abruptly saying, I know you and Gabby used to be together. Gabby, how sweetly he called her. He had a baby face and was shorter than me. I looked down at him calmly, raising an eyebrow in slight confusion. He looked up at me, his eyes slowly scanning my face, and when he didn't get the reaction he was hoping for, there was a hint of disappointment in his expression. After a pause, he continued, I saw that playlist she named after you. You two weren't very good at keeping your relationship a secret. I remained silent, patiently waiting for him to finish. He went on, My, my father really likes Gabriella. You know, Gabriella is strong and independent mature, and driven. My father says Gabriella reminds him of himself when he was young. My father wants to mentor her. Gabriella's future is limitless, and as it happens, I like her a lot too, and she likes me. Now we're together. But Daniel, your presence is quite bothersome. I hope you'll be sensible enough to resign on your own. That's when I realized what he was after, first to show off, then to intimidate, and finally to gently persuade me to leave on my own. I held my cup, my expression calm, my tone steady. Even with a slight smile, I looked down at him and said, Mr. Lee, any changes in an employee's position require going through the proper procedures. I'm not sure if you're here to fire me or what. If you're here to fire me, company policy clearly states that HR should be the one to talk to me and inform me of the reason for my dismissal. His face turned pale, perhaps not expecting me to be so unyielding. Before I turned to leave, I added, oh, and for any personnel changes involving employees at the manager level or above. They need to be personally approved and reported by the chairman. In other words, the only person in the entire company who can fire me is the chairman. Mr. Lee, you're just an intern in Gabriella's department. You're overstepping your bounds. With that, I didn't bother to look at his reaction and left with my cup. Not long after my conversation with Diego, the announcement of Albert's transfer to Nanjing was made. Before her departure, the chairman organized a farewell banquet for her, attended by all the management level staff of the company. Everyone knew that in addition to bidding farewell to Albert, Changes in the core personnel of the headquarters would soon follow. When the HR manager placed the invitation on my desk, only Bella looked pale. She was someone I had personally mentored. Leaning over her desk, she first tried to encourage me by saying, good luck, and then added solemnly, Daniel, no matter what happens, our team is standing behind you. If things don't work out here, we'll follow you wherever you go. I laughed, lightly tapping her forehead with the invitation and said gently, what are you talking about? It's just a meal. Have you forgotten my motto? Build bridges when you encounter water, and pave roads when you meet mountains. What's there to be afraid of? Besides, the one who loses definitely won't be me. Chapter 7 I was quite composed on the day of the dinner, in the private room. Heads of the marketing department, management, HR, finance, and various business lines were gathered. Chairman Pablo sat at the head of the table, with Diego to his left and Gabriela next to Diego. When everyone saw Diego sitting next to Pablo, they exchanged discreet glances. What had previously been just a rumor was now confirmed. Seeing an intern seated beside Pablo. However, since Pablo didn't introduce him, everyone pretended not to know and refrained from asking. I sat properly beside Sister Bai from the finance department, eating, drinking, socializing when necessary, and staying silent when appropriate. No one discussed business matters. The dinner's focus was on Albert. The theme, aside from reviewing her contributions to the company, was to wish her success in the Nanjing branch. It wasn't until the meal was almost over, and the pleasantries were exchanged, that Pablo put down his chopsticks and got to the main point of the dinner. In his early fifties, he was well-preserved, looking vibrant and energetic as if in his forties. His sharp gaze swept across those seated, 
Then he picked up his napkin and wiped his mouth before saying, Besides bidding farewell to Albert, there's one more thing I want to discuss. I put down my chopsticks and looked over at him. Out of the corner of my eye, I caught sight of Gabriella beside me. She wore a faint smile, looking elegant, intelligent, and poised, a perfect match for Diego, who sat smiling beside her. I averted my gaze, lowered my eyes, and slowly began wiping my hands with the towel beside me. Pablo's voice was deep and gentle. As everyone knows, I have only one son. When he graduated, I arranged for him to work in the company. My son is very strong-willed. He didn't want people in the company to know his identity and wanted to work his way up from the bottom. Over the years, he's done well. I've heard many of you praise him in front of me, and I'm pleased. Now, the time is right, and with Albert heading to Nanjing, I think it's time to introduce him to all of you. His gaze, filled with pride, quietly fell on me from across the table. He smiled and, with a hint of pride, extended his hand toward me, saying warmly, Daniel, come over to your father. It's time for everyone to meet you. I calmly put down the towel and smiled. In the dead silence that followed, the only sound was Gabriella's water glass tipping over. I looked in her direction. Her expression was relatively calm. She smiled apologetically while wiping the table with a napkin, her movement steady and not the least bit flustered. Then she looked up at me, her face slightly pale, her emotions unreadable. I withdrew my gaze without even a sidelong glance. I simply stood up and, under the shocked stares of everyone present, walked toward the head of the table, placing my hand on the back of Diego's chair. I politely and softly said, Mr. Lee, could you please move? I heard someone in the room gasp audibly. Once the dinner had achieved its purpose, it quickly concluded. I could only imagine the storm this evening's events would cause within the company. What intrigued me more was Gabriella. She had once told me, Daniel, people always strive for higher ground. I wondered if now she was on her way to that higher ground. I didn't glance at her. I didn't even bother to give her a look. As she and a dazed Diego came over to bid farewell to my father before leaving. I heard her restrained voice, Chairman Lee, we'll be going now. I didn't say anything. My father's scrutinizing gaze fell on Gabriella's face, then shifted to Diego beside her. After a moment, he smiled warmly and said, All right, all right. After everyone had left the room, his smile slowly faded. He looked at me and asked, What's going on with you and Gabriella? Yes, I had mentioned Gabriella to him, just after graduation, but I never told him that Gabriella and I were dating. With his experience, he likely figured it out on his own. I smiled, meeting Pablo's scrutinizing gaze, and coldly replied, You saw it yourself, didn't you? She was stolen by Diego. His mother is good at meddling in other people's relationships, so naturally, her son takes after her. I paused and then, emphasizing each word, added, Father. Chapter 8 The last time I called Pablo, Dad, was when I was seven years old. Back then, he had just divorced my mom. At the gate of our villa, I clung to his sleeve, repeatedly asking, Dad, Dad. Why did mom divorce you? Say something. But he didn't answer. I didn't understand as a child, but as I grew older, I learned about the complexities of adult relationships. My dad and Diego's mom were childhood sweethearts. Diego's mom despised my dad for being poor and married someone else. Afterward, my dad married my mom. My mom supported him as they built everything from the ground up. Once they became successful, Diego's mom showed up with Diego after divorcing her husband. At that time, Pablo was young and prideful and he held a grudge against his childhood sweetheart for choosing wealth over love, but the more he resented her, the harder it was for him to forget. My mom, on the other hand, never spoke much about the past between them. In front of me, she always maintained my dad's dignity. She was a graceful and dignified woman who divorced swiftly after being betrayed. However, after the divorce, Pablo didn't marry Diego's mom either. He just kept her around, mocking her for her poor judgment back then. Diego's original surname was Wong, but he changed it to Lee when he was eight probably to curry favor with Pablo. He and his mother, who had taken over our home, were smug. They didn't know about me, but I knew about them. I found out when I was eight years old. I had secretly returned to the villa without telling my mom and saw Pablo celebrating Diego's birthday. He was holding ten-year-old Diego in his arms, with Diego's mother standing beside him. All three of them were smiling as if they were a real family. After that, I never called Pablo, Dad, again, and we rarely saw each other. Gabriella only knew that my parents were divorced and that I had taken my mother's surname, changing my name to Daniel Mu. Later, when I graduated, Pablo offered me a job at his company. His exact words were, All these years, I haven't had any other children, only you. Doesn't your mom understand that? You're my biological son, the business your mother and I built. Who else would I give it to if not you? That aunt of yours has always wanted her son to come to the company to learn, but I've blocked it every time. Daniel, your father knows what he's doing. My mom was a proud and noble woman. When she divorced Pablo, 
She only took what was rightfully hers and nothing more. I'm not like her. Why should I give up what's mine? The more it displeases others, the more it pleases me. So, after graduation, I joined the company with Gabriella, starting from the bottom of the core business department and working my way up. Pablo knew about Gabriella, paid attention to her, and praised her as young and promising, saying her future was limitless, only because I had mentioned her to him before. My family's relationships were complicated. I had originally planned to explain everything to Gabriella when the day came for Pablo to make it public, but she gave me a surprise instead. Pablo looked at me, and for the first time, I saw a weary, tired expression on his face. He sighed and said, it's my fault, I've wronged you. I chuckled softly, just a man being a man. I suddenly remembered what Diego had said to me in the break room when he tried to intimidate me. He said Pablo thought Gabriella was a lot like him when he was young. I guess they are quite alike, in their ruthlessness and their tendency to burn bridges after crossing them. Oh, and they both lack good judgment. I returned to the company three days later. By then, the shocking news had been digested by everyone. When I came back, everyone's expressions remained unchanged, treating me as usual. No one crowded around to ask questions. They just smiled a bit more warmly than before. These were all seasoned professionals who knew how to strike the right balance. This allowed me to breathe a sigh of relief, and my demeanor remained as usual. Only Bella was upset with me, complaining about how she had worried for so long, only to find out I had been playing dumb all along. I finally appeased her with a seafood dinner. As she picked at a lobster claw, she asked, you're the real rich young master, so what is Diego? I didn't hide anything from her and briefly explained the situation. She looked shocked, oh my god, I can't believe there are people so shameless in this world, pretending to be the boss's son to fool everyone, that's disgusting. Daniel, while you were away. A lot of people were gossiping with me. Can I tell them about this? I really can't stand Diego's arrogant attitude. If it were true, fine. But it turns out he's just a fraud. I don't know what he's so smug about. I peeled a piece of lobster meat and, with a smile, casually said, it's not really a secret. If someone asks, go ahead and tell them. I didn't underestimate Bella's influence. By the end of the afternoon, the whole company knew the truth about Diego. Chapter 9 When I went to the finance department to get the project budget approved, I saw Diego standing in front of Sister Bai's desk, Sister Bai frowned, pointing at the expense reimbursement form, and asked Diego, why are you charging the company for a bag you bought, this reimbursement won't be approved, I suggest you review the other reimbursement items more carefully, don't try to charge personal items to the company account, his expression turned somewhat unpleasant at her words, and he grabbed the reimbursement form from the desk, before leaving, he shot me a nasty glare, as if I had put her up to it, I didn't say anything, since Pablo revealed my identity. I started getting involved in all the company's departments. This way, I could gain a clearer understanding of the company's overall development. Of course, Gabriella didn't get promoted to director, and for now, Albert is still remotely overseeing things from Nanjing. After I moved up, my managerial position became vacant. Bella still needed more experience and maturity, so we brought in a business manager from another large company to replace me. Once the personnel changes were confirmed, Many colleagues sent me congratulatory messages via WeChat or text. Only two people were exceptions. Whether out of guilt or something else, Gabriella and Diego had been avoiding me since I returned to the company, but there was really no need. My time and energy were limited, and with all the company matters I had to get a handle on, I didn't have the time to pay attention to them. Besides, bridges are bridges, and roads are roads, we were never on the same path, but they probably didn't see it that way. Diego was the first to confront me, again in the empty break room with the same coffee beans, but this time, his expression had changed from arrogance to anger, standing behind me, he spat out, hypocrite, I ignored him, so he continued, your mother pretended not to care about anything when she walked away, saying she'd never have anything to do with the Lee family again, I thought you two didn't care about the Lee family's assets, but it turns out you're just hypocrites, you act all detached and above it all, but in reality, you're fighting to come back, if you really were so noble and didn't care, if you really looked down on my dad's assets, you should have stayed far away, all talk, but in your hearts, you're hypocritical and disgusting, his words made me laugh, and I actually did laugh out loud, I don't enjoy dealing with unintelligent people, especially Diego, Bella had once asked if I had plans to deal with Diego, and while it might sound unbelievable, I hadn't really thought about it, because as long as he stayed in the company, there would naturally be others to make his life difficult, the one who would suffer wouldn't be me, other than the little bit of attention he got from Gabriella, I had never considered him a rival, he simply wasn't worthy, I looked at him, my gaze gentle, as if watching a clown perform, Diego, stop saying such stupid things, look at you, so agitated and upset, all I did was take back what's mine, yet you're acting like I've taken a piece of your heart, if I were you, I'd go home and tell your mother to come up with new ways to win over the old man, 
It's really pathetic. After all these years of you and your mother trying so hard to please and flatter Pablo, all you've got is a meager monthly allowance, not even a house. But don't worry. Now that I'm taking over the company, your and your mother's allowance won't be cut off. Consider it your well-earned reward for keeping the old man happy. His face turned from green to purple, then finally pale as he listened to my words. Then, as if he had thought of something, his mouth twisted into a smile, as if he'd found a weapon to use against me. I can't out-talk you, but Daniel, I'm not left with nothing. The girlfriend you loved for seven years is still mine, isn't she? I didn't even lift my eyelids. Trash belongs in the trash can. If she's yours, then she's yours. What's there to brag about? I think Diego chose Gabriela, perhaps because he liked her, but maybe also because, in his eyes, Gabriela was the youngest manager in the company's leadership, and Pablo favored her. He might have believed that Gabriela's future went far beyond a department director. He needed to establish himself in the company, and Gabriela was his best ally. In a way, Diego and Gabriela are quite a match. They both put up a facade, using each other to climb higher, only to end up with nothing. Deeply disappointed. It's funny when you think about it. After I finished speaking, I was truly tired of the conversation. With a patient yet firm tone, I looked at him and said, This is the last time I'll be this polite to you, Diego. I hope you have enough sense to keep a low profile in the company. Otherwise, I guarantee I won't always be this good-tempered. His eyes filled with tears at my words, but I wasn't Gabriella, and I didn't have any pity for him. I stood there, smiling as I watched the tears well up in his eyes, and thought to myself how pleasing they were to see. Chapter 10. Gabriella's resignation didn't surprise me. I couldn't think of a reason for her to stay. All her resignation procedures followed the normal process. I didn't intervene until all the steps were completed. On her last day at the company, for some reason, she sent me a message asking if we could talk. I didn't know what there was to talk about between us. The night Pablo revealed my identity. She had also called me, saying she was waiting for me outside my apartment. Coincidentally, Pablo had asked me to stay at the main house for a few days to go over the company's relationships with him. I didn't go back to my apartment. Nor did I reply to her message. After that, she wisely didn't bother me again. Perhaps because this was the final farewell. Even though I didn't respond to her message, she still came to find me. I had always admired a certain calmness in her demeanor. Maybe it's a trait all successful people have. The ability to pretend as if the betrayals between us never happened. She was so composed that it made me doubt whether my memories were accurate. Her expression was indifferent, revealing little emotion. And she even smiled as if we were old friends. Standing at the door, she asked, shall we talk? I stayed silent as she walked in and handed me a cup of coffee. I took it, and we stood side by side in front of the large floor-to-ceiling windows. The night had fallen, and the city's skyscrapers were ablaze with lights. Looking out through the clear glass, it felt like we were standing amidst the stars in the Milky Way. I heard Gabriella sigh beside me. Do you remember when we first started working here? That was nearly five years ago. Two fresh graduates standing in a similar high-rise, overlooking the city lights. Back then, she had joined the company with ambitious plans only to be assigned the most insignificant tasks. Later, she landed a million-dollar deal through her abilities. I still remember the look on her face, pale from the pain of drinking too much but still excited as she looked at me. She said, Daniel, let's build a home together in this city. Later, that big deal became her boss's achievement, and she only received a 500 yuan bonus. She used that 500 yuan to treat me to a hot pot meal. Sitting across from me, the steam obscured her face but I remember her voice. It was the first and last time I saw a look of bewilderment on her face. She asked me, Daniel, how long will it take for us to make something of ourselves? After that meal, I went to see Pablo. Since he divorced my mom, she hadn't seen him, let alone touched his money or resources. Even though he gave me an unlimited credit card, neither my mom nor I had ever used it. That was the first time I asked him for help, for Gabriella. I still remember the look of surprise on Pablo's face. He was delighted that I was willing to ask for his help but I also remember his meaningful words, Daniel, if she can't handle such a small matter in the real world and needs my help, she's not worthy of being a daughter-in-law of the Lee family. Even though he said that, he still took notice of Gabriella and praised her a few times in public. When the higher-ups show favor, it's like a guiding light. Naturally, Gabriella's career flourished afterward, and she was smart and capable on her own. I just didn't realize that along this path of handling things, we had gradually drifted apart. She aimed to rise to the top by winning the princess's favor, perhaps, in her mind. That was what it meant to make something of oneself. Her voice came from the gap in time, filled with nostalgic sighs. How did we end up like this? I scoffed. Gabriella, don't try to play the nostalgia card with me. I understood your earlier actions of seeking better opportunities. But now, don't make me lose all respect for you. She laughed too, turning her head to focus on me. She didn't continue speaking, but after a while, the smile on her lips faded bit by bit 
and she looked at me with a serious expression, can we not even be ordinary friends, Daniel, I betrayed you, and you hid things from me, doesn't that make us even, Gabriella, I sighed, looking back at her with indifference, I don't know what you mean by even, when you say even, are you basing it on the fact that I'm Pablo's son, did you really never think about it, if I weren't Pablo's son, what would my situation be now, I watched you and the chairman's son carry on your affair, flaunting your love, while I, under your influence and pressure, had no choice but to resign. According to the non-compete agreement, I wouldn't even be able to work in the same industry. All the years I spent accumulating experience, all my hard work, all my struggles, would have become nothing more than stepping stones for you and Diego to walk on. When I was wandering the streets, lost and broken, I imagine you and Diego were enjoying the best life had to offer in some high-rise downtown. Right. Gabriella. Now you're telling me we're even. Do you really think there's a way for us to be even? Finally, I looked at her pale, dazed face and smiled slightly, distant and indifferent. I politely said, Gabriella, there's no even. You owe me, and you'll owe me for the rest of your life. I'm not planning to be magnanimous and forgive you. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. If we meet again, we'll just be strangers. After that, I didn't waste any more time talking to her. I glanced at my watch and politely said, it's time for you to go. Gabriella's departing figure was unsteady. Over the years, I had rarely seen her looking so defeated, but this was the path she chose. Chapter 11. Later, at an industry summit, I ran into Gabriella once or twice. By then, I had already taken over Pablo's position and was treated like a star wherever I went. She stood on the outskirts of the crowd, starting over from a new company, at a new beginning, slowly climbing up again. She didn't even have the qualifications to speak to me. Later, during a meal with Pablo, he casually mentioned Diego's relationship, saying he had been swindled out of money and affection, calling him brainless. I don't know when Gabriela and Diego broke up, but it's no surprise that two people who came together out of interest eventually parted ways for the same reason. I held my teacup, gazing at the garden in full bloom. Spring had deepened in April. It was already another year gone by. The past had long been left behind. Overcome numerous challenges, 